Alright, alright, I'm gonna use my 123 Easy Car and my 123 Easy Wheel. I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna try to use them in a Unity game to make a 123 Easy Driving Car. So let's just get those files. Um, here's the car. So let me download that. Boom. Uh, cancel. Let me download the wheel. 123 FBX. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. Save. Right there's the wheel, and let me see, darn it, this one I just had the blend file, so here's the blend file for the car, save it to my desktop, bam, okay, so the car, let me just export it as an FBX, so I'm opening it up in Blender, okay, and then I'll just export it as an FBX, the mesh, the transform, I'll call it 123car to my desktop, export. Alright, so now I have the car and the wheel right here. Now let me start up a Unity project to put the car and the wheel in. So I'm going to add 123car. Um, I'm going to say new, new, 3D project, one, two, three, car, car and wheel, okay, now say create, and then wait for Unity to start the project, to start the new projects, come on Unity, alright, so I got the new project started up, let me take the two assets here, drag them into the project. So I got the wheel and I got the car. So first, first I'm going to have to put a floor, something to drive around on. And let's make it big enough to drive around on. Hopefully this is big enough. Let's see how big the FBXs are when I put them in. All right, so there's the car. Let's pick it up a little bit. And this is the wheel. <laughs> yeah, the wheel's way big. Ooh. So let's just gotta shrink down this wheel. And why is there a, I think there's like a whiteness around it because is there a camera and a light? Yeah, there's a camera in here and a light. So we're gonna have to take out that. Um, first let's unpack the prefab so I can get rid of the camera that has itself delete and I can get rid of the light that has itself delete there. So now it's just a wheel, and this is just a car, and this is just a wheel. And the visor circle was there when I made the wheel, but it doesn't have to be here. So I could delete that. Um, so this is this is the rim, and this is the tire. Okay, so here I have the wheel. Let's see how it looks in position. If we put it in position, it may still be a little too big. Just a little bit too big. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. No, no, down, down. There you go. Shrink it down a little bit more. And stick it in position there. And then let's get a copy. So this is the um, front left. Let's duplicate it and pull it back. Front left, back right. The wheels, they should be on the, they should just be on the ground. So let me do that. And then the other wheel, no, don't be a child. Other wheel, let me pick you up on top of the ground. Okay. So we have the car model here. Let's bring it down on the wheels. It's funny because the car model has a way, way, way bigger thing in the back and the front. But anyway, those are two wheels there. Now those two wheels, let me just call this um, uh, wheel. That's my front right wheel, FR. And this is wheel wheel back R. Okay. So both of these guys, I want to copy them. 
duplicate and the duplicates are going to move over to the other side of the car and then let's see how far over they have to go like that I'm having trouble because the lighting is off so let me just get an image for the ground let me see road texture something for the road um, I'll just pick this and I will save it to my project location. So that is Unity 123 Car Wheel Assets. I'll just call this road. Here it is. Let's put that on there. Bam. Now, of course, that's way too big. So we'll just tile it up a little, like 5 by 5, or even more, 8 by 8. So we got like a real texture on the ground, all right? Now the car, I said that we have like some light issues here. It's kind of hard to see the car. So let me just take the light and make a copy of it, duplicate it. And on the copy, I'm just going to have it shine from the other way. So we kind of have a better lighting situation. And let me just reduce the intensity of both lights. 0.8. So let's see how I could see around the car now. This side's really dark. Add another light, duplicate. And for this third light, let's just shine it that way. And... Okay. Okie dokie. Yes, good wife. <laughs> All right, so now I have better lighting so I can see everything. So things are kind of in position for the car. So I'm just going to name this car. But I have to order the hierarchy of objects in my car. So here in the car, I'm going to have a, a child. It's going to be the wheels. Okay, and then for that, I'm going to put in my front the right side wheels are going to become a child there, and the left side wheels are going to become a child there. FRBR, and this is FLBL. FL and BL. They're children. That way, when I move the car, the wheels they just going to move. They're just going to move with it nicely. See? Okay. File, save. All right, so I got my car. I got, this is the floor. This is the, this is the ground, so meaning that. Now the other thing I need with a car, after I have the wheels, I'm gonna have to have the wheel colliders also. But I'm gonna use Unity's wheel collider, so I'm gonna create another empty. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna do it that way. The wheel colliders have to be in the same position as the wheels. So I'm just gonna make a copy of this one, duplicate, okay? And this one, I'll just call the colliders, enter. And then over here, I could delete the visual components of the wheels. Delete. Because on the wheel collider ones, I just, I'm just going to put collider objects. So I'll delete the visual component of the wheels, which are these two guys. Delete. And what I'll do instead is I will put wheel colliders for each of them. Physics, wheel collider, one. And over here, physics wheel collider two, physics wheel collider three. Yeah. And physics wheel collider four. All right, so all these have wheel colliders. So I'm going to select them. And we can't see them yet. Is every, because why? Because I don't know why. Let me see if I take this front right one. That's funny, that looks like the back wheel. The, the naming's a little off here. But this wheel collider, um, I, it's there, is it? No, I don't see anything yet. Hold on. Okay, so the wheels, the wheels wheel colliders are not going to show until the there is a rigid body on the car. So I'm going to go to car object here, and I'm going to add a rigid body. Okay, now you can see this little green circle there. Those are the wheel collider wheels. So they're just too small. So what I'll do is I'll just select them all, 
and change the radius until they're about as big as the wheel wheels. See, that's just make them about as big as the visual wheels. Okay, that's good. Now they each have a weight of 20, each of the wheels. So that means the car is gonna have to have a weight on its rigid body or this car is gonna go flying. So, I don't know, let's say that this vehicle weighs 1,500 pounds, like, okay? So I got the wheels, got the wheel colliders on it. Let me just save that. And also, as a matter of fact, let me just take this whole car and make it into a prefab. Badunk, okay? What happens now if I press play? I don't know, I don't know what happens. But it should, it's not acting nicely. It's bouncing around too much. Something's missing still. I guess the other thing I'm gonna have to do is take off the colliders on these, but there are none. See, this is just visual renderer. Yeah, there's no colliders on these wheels. So it's not that. Um, there's nothing on that. And these, I said they weigh 20 and this thing's bouncing like crazy. So, Got the springs. Maybe could it weigh more? Could it weigh like 2,000? I don't think it's this, but I'll try. If it weighs 2,000 pounds. And let me just set the camera up to face this way. Control Shift F. And let's just see what's up. We'll figure it out. Oh man. What, what, what? What's going on with that wheel? Oh, there you are, just bouncing. Darn it. What is it? All right. I think um, maybe the car needs a rigid body also. So let's add one. I'm going to add a, I selected the car. Here it is highlighted in orange. And now I'm going to add a collider to it, um, a mesh collider. I think this may be part of what was wrong, what I'm missing. File, save, and then press play. And I have an error. Oh, okay. I think I just added a script here. But why would it be having an error when I add a script? It's brand new script. Hmm. Oh, I think I know why. You can't have the name of a class starting with a number. That's why. So, let me just delete this. There. I should get rid of that. All right, so I added a collider and a rigid body to the car. And now the car seems to be stabilized and it's staying on the ground. So now, up to the part where I was doing before, I was going to add a script for the car. So I'll just call it car control. And let's take a look at it and write a script. So here we are. I am just going to gut this inside out here. Yeah, what's this? Ignore. I hope this is big enough so you guys can read it. Let me gut this out. And things that are gray and the using statements aren't being used yet, I'm going to gut those out. All right, so I'm going to write the script. Here we go. Hmm. Well, let me see. I'm going to have some helper stuff here. I just always mark it in a region called helper in my scripts. And here I'm just going to have the information for each wheel. So for each wheel, I'm going to put system serializable so it could save with the car and in the inspector window. I'm just going to use a structure that's going to hold my wheel info because I need two things. I need the position of the wheel, the transform of my visual wheel, VW. Okay, I'll just spell it out, visual wheel, and then I'm going to need the wheel collider of the, uh, you know, visual wheel, the collider wheel. Yeah, so all the math that Unity is going to do, all the physics it's going to do on the wheel colliders, I'm going to have to, I need both of these because I'm going to have to put the wheel collider information and update the, tra the um, visual wheels to match. So what kind of things do I need from the user? So I'll need like um, the, the power of the motor which by default, let me just give it a number. And I'm gonna need the power for steering, like the steering angles. And then I'm gonna need the power for the braking. Okay, so I'll just make that less than the power of the motor. And then I have four wheels in the car. So I'm gonna have a wheel info for each of those wheels. So I'll have the front left. Let me just make it um, FL public wheel info front left front right and then public wheel info back left and back right back right now let me just save that and take a look back at my car because i know i wonder if i had these wheels named right let me let me select each wheel you see this says front right and this is definitely the back wheel so let me name that one right this is 
um, back right, okay, and this is front right, FR, FR, this is front left, yeah, I kind of messed up the names, but I'll fix them now, and this is back left, BL, BL, so that is BR, this is FR, this is FL, and this is BL. All right, so I got those names straight. I'm also just throw the script on the car right there at the level of the car. And there we go. And now I have these so I could define what the visual wheel is. For the FL, that would be this. And the collider wheel is FL, this. See, I'm just going to tell my script what the objects are. Then for the front right, FR, FR, this, this one's the collider. And this one's the visual transform collider, transform BL, transform BL collider, then BR, back right, BR visual, BR collider. All right, so <clears throat> I just told the script, um, you know, what all the wheel objects from the scene are. Go back to the script now, let's see what else I got. So all that, all that stuff should be there. Whew. So let's see, private void start. What I have to do when this game starts up for this car is I probably want to, um, I think I got, I got all the wheels defined. So then really what I want is an update function. What am I gonna do in the update? Let's see. While the wheels are, phys are are you know colliders they're physics so I should do it in a fixed update not just the update so a fixed update is one of the events that get handled from the model behavior class as you can see it's called every fixed frame rate frame if the model behavior is enabled okay good so now inside I have to do stuff like I have to get user input so I'm gonna use I'm gonna get the um, axis input from the input so I'm gonna have the horizontal is going to I'm gonna have the vertical and the horizontal. So vertical equals input dot get axis. Did it did it it vertical. Okay. And the values from this are going to be minus one, zero to one. And if I have a joystick, I actually get all the values in between. That's why I'm using the get axis because I think if I'm gonna drive a car, I want a smoother control. So get axis is gonna return values between those. Horizontal, bam. And the word vertical and horizontal. They are defined in the input settings, and I'll show you that in the input manager. If I go into Unity and I open up the, hmm, no, I think it's I open up the preferences, the project settings, edit project settings, then there is the input manager here. This is where the inputs are defined. So you see how here's vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal. So one of these is for um, reading from the joysticks. So it reads from a joystick axis and it reads from the left and right arrows and the AD. So I'm going to be able to use WASD, the arrow keys, or the joystick with this horizontal and vertical. So here's the definition and here's the definition. You can have multi multiple definitions to read for multiple things, but that's where I'm getting the values for vertical and horizontal. That's how come those words mean anything at all. All right, so if I get those values, now I have to use them. So I'm going to say that this car is front wheel drive. I mean, that you steer with the front wheels. So I'm going to have the front left dot wheel collider and to that front wheel, um, what did I name this thing? Oh, collider wheel, collider wheel dot steer angle. I'm going to set the steer angle of this wheel to be equal to whatever the horizontal value is. Remember, it's from minus one to one times the steer that the user put, you know, so I get that full range of motion, minus 50 to 50 with the steer. And the other wheel that steers is the front right collider wheel, dot steer angle equals horizontal dot steer. Yeah, so those two front wheels, they're gonna do the turning. And now, how many wheels are gonna have control over the wheel spinning? Let's just start off with saying that the back ones do. So BL dot collider wheel dot, there's a motor, I have to apply the torque to the motor, which will be vert times whatever the value the user said for motor. And then the other wheel, collider wheel dot 
motor torque equals vert times motor. All right, so that should get I should get the wheels um, moving. Save. Now I'll also have to get my car um, braking. All right, so this this is how do I do a brake? All right, so this is moving. All right, so let me just put the comment here that this is for um, movement. Oh, it's for acceleration. Okay, I'll just say movement and steering. And then I'm gonna. There's also brakes that I could apply. So let's just do the brakes now. And we'll say that if the user is pressing input dot get button, fire one, which I think is the uh, the left control or the gamepad A button. So I'll just put that comment there. Left control key or the gamepad A key. Yeah, so if the user is pressing those, oh, what did I do? I forgot to put my if statement brackets. There we go. And I'll do whatever's in this if statement. What I'm going to do is I will, for each of the wheels, for the front left dot collider wheel dot brake torque, and that's going to equal whatever the value is I have for brake that the user put in. And I'm going to apply brakes to every wheel. Just be applying that brake force to every wheel. The force to try to stop the wheels from spinning. Um, FL, FR, BL, dot collider wheel, dot brake torque, equals brake. See, it's kind of easy, right guys? Right girls? Collider wheel, dot brake torque, equals brake. So that'll be applying brakes if I'm pressing the button to brake. Else, I better take the brakes off so the wheels can spin again. So let me just make a copy of this and paste it, but change all the values of brake to zero. No brake. No brake power. So this is great. This is going to get the um, wheel colliders spinning, turning, and braking. So let me see what happens. Let me make this full screen. And let me press play. And the car is there. And I accelerate. And slowly the car is moving, but you notice the wheels aren't spinning. Boy, I need some more power to this car because it is like, whew, it is not moving. All right. But the wheels aren't spinning. That's because, like I said, the visual wheel has to have information from the collider wheel to say what it's supposed to look like. So let's do that. Movement steering, the brakes. And now we want to update the um, visual wheel. Okay. So let's do that. I need a vector three for the position, and I need a quaternion for the rotation of each of these wheels. So all I have to do is ask the collider what what's the position in the rotation. So let me do it wheel by wheel. So first I have front left dot collider wheel dot get the world position or the world pose actually collider wheel dot get world pose. And then I'm going to put the values into the pause and into the rote. It's that easy. Now the pause and the rote, I just apply it. FL dot to the visual wheel dot position equals pause. FL dot visual wheel dot rotation equals rote. It's that simple. All right. So I do that for all the four wheels. So let me just do a little copy paste. All right. So this is front and this is FR, FR, FR. And then we're going to do BL for the back left, BL, and BL. And then BR, BR, and BR. Okay. I think that's it. La dee dotty. Save, go back, and let's play. Whoa, what the heck is going on with the wheels? <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? That was not expected. Let's, what did I do wrong? Did I put something in the wrong spot here? Position, rotation, position, rotation, pause, and rote. Is that what it asked for? Let me see. It asked for the pause and the rotation is a quaternion. Okay, that's right. Uh, wow, that was not expected. 
Hmm. So one, two, three, four wheels. I got the names right. Well, <clears throat> let me see. The side I'm seeing here is the right side. So F right. Hmm. The car moves so slowly. Is it because I made it too heavy? Instead of 2,000 pounds, let me try 1,200 pounds. File, save. Ay, 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 what was that? What was that? Collider 000. Is it because these numbers aren't like a scale? Is it because of the scale? How could Z be a different X, Y, and Z? Uh oh, I think I know what it is. Since these wheels weren't scaled at 000, that must be what's messing it up. So what I'm going to do is go back to, you see these um, wheel objects that I have here. If I just click on one of them, um, if, I put, if I put the wheel back in here, that is scaled at 111. But the internals, like the, this is the wheel. Look how these measurements aren't, they aren't zeroed out. So that means when I got it from Blender, I'm going to have to fix it from there. So we could do this. It's good that this happened. That way we could find out what do we do to fix it. See, if I never experienced this, then you'd be like, why are my wheels working? I'd be like, I don't know. They should just work. So what I'm going to do is this FBX for the wheel. Let me open it up in Blender and get the scaling right. Come on, Blender. Okay, so here I am going to open an FBX. Ooh, does it only open Blend Files? Okay, so here, File, Import, and FBX from my desktop. I have the wheel. Bam. So, there's a couple of things in here I don't need. Let me delete that. I got all these cameras here. Goodbye, cameras. Um, oh, that's my wheel, and this is the cube from the start. Delete that. And I got these lights, and delete that. So, let's name things nicely. So, when I go back into Unity, they're going to be nicely named. Like, this is a rim, and this is a tire. Okay. Boom, boom. Now, they're very big. They're very big, but let's take the rim first. And yeah, you see how the scales are all set? Let's just um, apply the transforms for that. There, so now they're one. And now for the tire, it also. Object, apply, apply the transforms. And now they're all zeroed out. So now I have this nicely set. Also, it's kind of big in the game. I could try to shrink it up over here and use the scale. Oh man, how do I do it? It's better if I go like this and say S. And kind of try to bring it down inside a little bit closer to what it was. And now look, I have to reset my transforms again. So apply transforms, bam. All right, so this will be size one of the wheel. And let me save that. First, let me save it as a blend file. So this is my one, two, three wheel. Wait, whoa, whoa, type, type, type. One, two, three wheel. I'll save it as a blend file to my desktop. And for me using it in Unity, I'll export it as an FBX to my desktop. I just need the mesh. And I'll overwrite the one that's there, export FBX. OK. So this should solve the problem with the wheels doing what they did. But you know what? Let me make sure the car also is set right so I don't have to come back and check that out. So actually, I could just delete these guys, delete. And let me import the car. Import. FBX of the car and make sure it doesn't have that problem with the scales. Um, so here's the car. And yeah, you see this also has like things stretched out. So apply transforms, all transforms. Boom. Now we can tell the wheel was that big. So this car, it, let's just re export this again now. Export the FBX for the car. FBX, export. Ta da! All right, got the car, got the wheel. I got the transforms down to zero. So now I'm going to go to Unity and use these new objects instead. Um, so let me just create a folder for the models. And I'll put the wheel in there. And I'll put the car in there. Oh, man. So that was a car that was acting all funky. Let me just make another car right here. Let me get the car. Okay, and let me put the four wheels here. Okay, uh, still too big, I guess. But as long as they're all one, 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 that's the main thing. Let's see what we got. Let me try to take the size of the inside things better and do the scale so that the wheel is size one. 
and the scale of the inside things or not. And let's make the wheel like that big. Is that the right size? Let's see if I move it into position here so I could like really tell. This has to be on the ground. Can and in there. A little bit back. So that looks good. That looks like a good size wheel. So this is gonna be my wheel. Um where's my second car? Oh, here it is. So that was my first car. That kinda had the objects were messed up. Save. So this is a wheel. Now I want to position all four of them. This is the what is that? My front, my FR? This is FR. So this is FR. Duplicate. Duplicate. And this is going to be my BR, my back right. Just pull it on back here. Okay. And let's start setting up the structure in here. I'm going to create an empty child. This is going to be the wheels. And FR and BR. Now I'm going to select FR and BR and duplicate. And then these duplicates, I'm just going to move them over to the other side. Enough. There we go. Does that look good? Yeah. And then these will be the um, F left, the front left, FL, and the back left, BL. All right. So this. And holding down control, let me pick these. All are the wheels. Badunk. And then what did I do? I took a copy of the wheels and I duplicated it. And these are going to be the colliders. The only thing is the colliders are not going to have the visual wheels, so I'll delete those components of them. And they're getting stuck up on that there, prefabs. So let me just right click and unpack. Okay. So take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Everything's coming out. Okay. So these are the colliders. So what they need are colliders. So out of physics. I selected them all at the same time. So I could just do it all at once. And boom. They all get colliders, right? One, two, three. Good. Then over here, these visual wheels, they're just fine. Over here, the car, it needs um, a collider and it needs a rigid body. So I'm going to add the mesh collider, convex, and then I'm going to add the rigid body. And I gave it a weight of like 1200. Okay. See, we're doing everything over again. This time we're just going faster. Um, now what? So one, two, three car just come down here. Now what? Now the colliders are too small is what I think. So we got to set the radius of the colliders to match the, um, the car's actual wheels. And you could see a little bit of a green line on them, but we could just use the radius and we set the radius to match up better. Okay, and I like that. Bam. All right, so that's everything setting up the car. And you have the wheels and the colliders as a child of the car. And the car now, I just need to, um, let me delete this other car that I had, the first one that the wheels were acting all funny, that prefab, I'm going to delete that. And I'm just going to delete the first car altogether now, delete. So this is my one, two, three car. Those are the first models, I'm going to delete them too. Here's my one, two, three car. I need to put the script on it. So here's a script we just wrote that controls the car. And we're just going to have to tell it what all the wheels are. So we have the visual wheels first. So I have FR, BR, let's put everything in its place. FL, BL. OK, those are the visuals. Now let's go over the colliders. FR, BR, uh, F, oh darn it. F uh, where'd you go? Escape. Um, okay, where was that to? FR, I got it. BR, I got it. FL. And the last one, BL. And now let's try. Let me say file save. Let's try it. If this car drives with the wheels properly without the. Oh, everything's off position from the camera. So let me just get a new point of view here. Control Shift F. And press play and our long journey is almost over yeah there you go the wheels are spinning and it goes then if I press the um, press the brake er, it just like it seems to be so little power so this is where I have to play around with stuff now is there so little power because the car's too heavy so let me make it weigh 800 pounds press play and that helps the speed a little bit oh seeing the wheels turn 
it's just driving like a like a station wagon so I could just add some more power which thankfully I have it right here in the script um, let's add the power to 1200 okay and let's try that press play vroom, vroom, vroom. and there we go we have a car it's driving around you made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. This is my website. The main thing I want to show you is that for any of these videos that you've seen on YouTube, I have the tutorial section, which has the blue links for the projects and the orange links are the files. Also, you could go over here and play some of the games we made in the game camp.